We welcome you here for the third day at the Technical Forum at the Group Exhibit Hydrogen and Fuel Cells 2013. Please have a seat, have a free drink. My name is Kirsten Lasner. I'm here, the moderator at the Technical Forum. I'm pleased to give you some information about the day. We are starting here with two company presentations. At 11.20, the European Day would begin with two podium discussions, followed after a break one warm hour with another one. At 3.30, we will continue with company presentations. But now, let us concentrate us on our next presentation, dealing with the topic Fuel Flexible CHHP System Enhanced Energy Security and FC and EV Infrastructure by Fuel Cell Energy Solution by the Manager of Commercial Development, Andreas Frömmel. Give him a big hand, please. Good morning, everybody. A pleasure to see you here. I want to talk uh, to you about the CHHP. CHHP means combined heat, hydrogen, and power. Therefore, we are talking about that. And coming to the next slide, if it works. It's me? No, it's you. OK, understand. So coming to an overview of what I want to talk to you. So uh, we should start with some challenges in the current grid and come to the solution we established for that. And uh, later on I will explain a little bit more about our company and also about the fuel cells, the fuel cell power plants. We have some challenges in, in the grid f coming from several sources. So you see here over voltage, under voltage, frequency issues, and last but not least, a complete outage. I don't want to step into this in detail. I only want to explain you that we have these issues when we have to work with this. And some of them came from uh, the fluctuant power from renewable energy, so solar and wind. And then for an example, you see here, wind power, uh, it's a kind of soft energy and we have we have here the, the wind power, you all know this. The solution could be to store some of this energy we need to follow the load uh, profile. And uh, with, an, with a fuel cell, we are able to produce hydrogen and we can lower the capacity which is needed to store this energy for the peak in, in the load profile. So the idea is to use a fuel cell for constantly power production and a part of this we should um, use to produce hydrogen. And with this hydrogen we are able to, to uh, lower the capacity which is needed for an electrical storage. So we are more or less a cross-cutting role. Um, in the middle we are able to produce waste, um, produce uh, energy, heat and hydrogen out of uh, biogas made by uh, biogas uh, equipment from biomass or um, at least wastewater treatment and such sources. We feed the vehicles, <laughs> electrical vehicles with, with uh, electrical power and fuel cell vehicles with uh, needed hydrogen. And we also be able to store the energy. S we can um, put in the very pure hydrogen in the chemical industry. And uh, we can also upgrade the quality of the um, biogas. Here you see a power plant, a short overview to this. Uh, you see at least, uh, let me have a look. Here is a DFC 300 and you, you see here the, the hot module. We have several parts and we'll come back later to this. Interesting is that until now this uh, plant produced more than two terawatt hours uh, electricity and uh, more than 10 tons of hydrogen. So we, we used it in, in several uh, locations and this is in uh, uh, California. 
you see here the wastewater treatment plan and here is, 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 uh, is the power plant and here is the renewable hydrogen filling station so they use it uh, exactly for the infrastructure of fuel cell cars or fuel cell mobility at least to give you an idea of the capacity we have three different parts like here so it's a, a DFC 300 with an electrical output of 300 kilowatt the DFC 1500 has an electrical output of 1.4 megawatt and the 3000 unit an electrical output of 2.8 megawatt and I want to point you on, on these numbers here so you have the possibility to produce at least for the, for the fuel cells uh, fuel cell cars uh, 300 you can feed 300 uh, cars per day approximately you see a half a kilo of hydrogen per day to, to refill uh, or refuel the cars and it's of course increasing with, with higher capacities the uh, same would be with um, with electrical cars so we have a really good impact for uh, such an infrastructure and in the combination with with um, solar and wind could be a really good solution uh, I want to point you on on this fuel cell park to, to give you an idea about the impact we have there so this is a fuel cell park in South Korea with 11.2 uh, megawatt electrical output and so you can imagine that we are able to to have a, a serious impact in the energy turnover and to uh, uh, feed in not only a stable power to the grid electrical power also to feed in um, heat for the at least uh, municipal grids or so and also for uh, for production uh, for process power uh, process heat uh, and then we can f uh, use the technology to produce hydrogen uh, it's separated maybe uh, some technical um, uh, details about that we use the air of the anode and uh, we separate the hydrogen uh, with or via um, membrane and then we store it this chart should show you that uh, this is a, a, a DFC and we can combine it with the, the, the biogas so it comes from waste or from landfill gas uh, we can use it we uh, uh, produce the base load in, in this example uh, 2 megawatt and some of this uh, hydrogen we store and we can use a PAM for instance for load following so it's a combined uh, production of uh, electricity base load from a, from a molten carbonate fuel cell and peak load from, from a PAM for instance it's only an example and combine this with wind and solar we are able to produce or to, to change the quality from fluctuant power from soft energy to hard power or to a, a more stable and load following solution that's the idea behind so uh, coming to our oh no one more slide above uh, about the idea to use it uh, maybe you know it in Germany we have in, a, in the future with with more capacities in the renew renewable energy we will have a lot of production in the north and and we will have uh, a lot of uh, demand in the south therefore we try to establish new transmission lines and we are late in this uh, field that's the uh, uh, idea behind to uh, use this solution it's one point or one a piece in in in, in a whole solution uh, to uh, avoid all these new transmission lines or at least some of them sorry for that um so and and we are able to decentralize 
this solution. Uh, we can put it directly in the city. This is a uh, installation in, or a picture of an installation in Berlin uh, in the new Ministry for Research. We will install this in an, an orchard. And um, what's the reason why we can do it? We can install this solution directly into the city. So right now we are sitting here and uh, maybe this talk will take uh, 20 minutes and during this time um, a traditional power plant will produce um, in one hour compared with us we, 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 uh, this is producing a, a ton of CO2 so you see here we, if we would use a 1.4 megawatt unit we would uh, have less 9,000 tons per year CO2 emissions and during our speech here we uh, compared with 8,000 hours per year uh, operation time this is one ton during one hour and here you see NOx and SOx we also have reduced emissions in this and it's much important to use uh, this solution directly in the city that's the reason why we uh, are focused on decentralized uh, solutions in urban regions. Coming to our company, I want to explain you uh, we, uh, we are we, co the commercial um, installation come from 2003 and now we have uh, more than eight uh, power plants installed and uh, we have uh, worldwide uh, this installation at 64 sites and more than 1.5 megawatt hours uh, are produced right now and th uh, 300 megawatt are installed or ordered and the largest uh, installation is uh, about 60 megawatt it's in South Korea it's a fuser park so we have a really good impact to uh, energy turnover we are talking about combined heat hydrogen and power so the the power plants are designed for 20 years of operation and the stack lifetime right now is five years the next generation will have seven years and we can use uh, natural gas or biogas as well Fusel Energy Solutions is a joint venture from Fusel Energy, Nestec listed, and the Fraunhofer IKTS is a Fraunhofer Institute focused on ceramic technologies. And we have a headquarter in Dresden and the production in Munich. And uh, it's important to know that we are a um, focused Fusel company. It's our goal to do it only that and starting from research and development, manufacturing, install, sell of course, install and making service and also the, if it's, uh, there's a possibility that we do also the operation. And it's really important to know that about the services, uh, there's an interesting business model we provide. So we provide a full service agreement we obtain all the technical risk to us from our customers and for a full service fee uh, we do all the planned and unplanned um, maintenance and also the stack replacement and we guarantee the output of the um, fuel cells I want to show you some of the installations to give you an idea uh, about the natural gas application and the renewable biogas application all over the world this is the world largest one and uh, we see a development uh, in a global approach a development from smaller installation to larger until to multi megawatt solution it's a little bit difficult to to imagine this 
when you see that or when you uh, read in the past that fuel cells are uh, right before the commercial stage and also in the laboratory stage but we are much uh, ahead of this and you see uh, mostly the customer starts with smaller installation then they grow up and we see the global development because we are ready for commercial or we are right, right into the commercial stage and we will see that there's a serious uh, development into this direction multi megawatt um, units or multi megawatt installation it's interesting especially for the german market to see that it is possible to um, have a serious impact into the energy turnover what's the basic of this so we uh, reached a really good um, results in reducing the costs coming from 2003 with the first commercial project until now it's about 60 percent cost reduction and our goal is to come uh, at least in in midterm to a, a cost per kilowatt of about 1500 euro uh, why this is important we want to it's our vision that we will supply or we will provide or produce energy below cost of the normal grid without incentives without funding that's our vision and we working hard every day to reach this uh, some of the last um, slides i want to give you an idea about uh, the end user of our uh, fuel cell power plants uh, Feeded by natural gas, of course the utilities they like it because we we are a, have a good support for the grid quality for the power quality into the grid. It's a high quality uh, electricity we produce. All education, healthcare, uh, hospital hospitals, so they can use the the high temperature heat we provide. It's uh, 400 degree, so they can uh, use it in their processes manufacturing industry it's a, a huge <coughs> sorry it's a huge area and uh, at least also least but not least um, the hospitality so hotel hotel chains uh, outside in the nature they, they can use it to to be green labeled because of the, of the low emissions of our power plants large buildings and we, we saw some of them, so uh, Fenchurch 20 is a, a, a huge uh, skyscraper in, in London. We uh, will install a 300 kilowatt unit in July this year. And you see here the Viking Lady. It's a marine application of our fuel cell, a 400 kilowatt unit on the ship to supply energy to uh, larger ships I into the harbor, harbor or in, in, uh, in, in the near shore areas or for uh, uh, oil platforms. And in a renewable biogas um, field, we use it, for instance, in, in um, agricultural environment or for food production. Uh, we have an installation had uh, with Erdinger, brewery or with dairy so we can use it really good the the heat for for the production process of the food industry so any question i would like to answer so thank you yes. very much mr Over Hummel. yes it's your big hand here uh, thank you uh, good presentation you had a slide with some production costs yeah. uh, uh, showing uh, uh, production costs of uh, yeah, 2,000 euro uh, per kilowatt. Is that a, uh, a unit cost uh, a, a or, a, or installation? Uh, it's without, without installation and transportation because it's mostly this is um, a special a, a, a special feature of, of the application or of the location of the site so we have to adjust this to the um, special customer but this is with, without installation and, and transport but for the whole system but uh, for the megawatt class right. 
Did you um, have, have you calculated or estimated the uh, cost uh, for the hydrogen on the CHHP on a euro per kilogram? Uh, you're talking about the hydrogen we produce? Yes, from Orange, uh, from California. And you're talking about the, the price we calculated to sell it? Yes. It's up to the customer, so I don't know exactly the price for that. And I, th I think it shouldn't be our task to, to determine this price. So the customer will decide uh, how or for which price he would sell the hydrogen. Uh, maybe you can do it offline with, with Chip Baton. Welcome to Chip Baton, our CEO. He's here and he would be very familiar with this um, particular installation. <laughs> question you. answered or <laughs> Do you like to, to uh, edit something? <laughs> Address very well. Um, to answer your first question, Joel, um, the installation cost you probably add give or take around 20% to that total. Okay, it depends, as Andreas said, on the installation. Is it complicated? Is it simple? Indoor, outdoor, things like that. Um, we do know the price of the the cost of the hydrogen that we produce in California, which is a small system, that's a 300 kilowatt yeah. system using renewable biogas. Standing here today, I can't remember the exact number in the units that you gave me, I can find out. But Andreas is also correct that the owner of that gas, the offtake is actually Air Products, who's selling the gas to the, um, the, uh, the fueling station. And they don't like us to disclose that for obvious reasons. But I'll be happy to share with you the cost of what it costs to produce the hydrogen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Does anybody like to make some remarks or to add a question? Yes. Hi, I'm Dan Carter from Fuel Cell Today. Um, how many of your current customers and the, uh, the future customers you've got lined oh, up already please will again. be? I'm, I'm interested in how many of your current customers, apart from apart from OCSD, will be using the products in CHHP mode. Um, we are in an early stage of this development. We are more or less at the end of the research state. So the hydrogen. Um, feature or, or extension of, of the fuel cell power plant will be m more an idea of, of the future, uh, following the demand. And um, we are doing a lot of um, efforts to come uh, to, to go forward with this. But y you know, uh, we, from our point of view, we need fuel cell cars to establish the infrastructure. And we are ready to do it but uh, hand and egg. <laughs> so uh, until now, uh, we have only the research and development or demo um, project, showcase project with this. I is there no interest from the power to gas side to, uh, to inject the hydrogen? Power to gas to... to, to uh, we, are, we talked about producing hydrogen, you know, and um, Power to gas, we will be on the side gas to power to close the chain. Yes, it's quite clear. And uh, to have the idea to feed in the, the hydrogen in the north into the natural grid and, and feed it out and use it in, in the south. So I think this is a different task or a different subject to talk about this instead of talking about using the um, using the fuel cell from natural gas to produce hydrogen for, for infrastructure. So we were able to use one solution um, we can provide to, to enhance the infrastructure for electrical vehicle and for fuel cell cars as well. I'm not sure whether I answered your question. <laughs> Maybe should we do um, I, I just wondered if you could extend that model beyond vehicles and use it for you're producing the gas anyway, and you mentioned that the large Korean plants have a potential to produce tons of hydrogen. Yeah. Could you use that for um, injection into the gas grid? Is, it, is that something you're interested in? Uh, coming from the biogas idea. 
because I, I thought about uh, how should I or why should I use natural gas to produce hydrogen to feed it into the natural gas. So, the, but you have the point if we came from biogas or uh, landfill gas or whatever else, that would be a good idea. Yes. That's a, a different chain. Okay. Thanks. Um, I sorry for interrupt you now because we have a break now. Have okay. To so if you uh, like to discuss it more detailed, you um, can do it offline. Yeah, mm -hmm. offline. Yeah, or of where's your booth here? Uh, yeah, it's a B fifty B five O over there. It's over there, so you yes. can follow Mr. Frommer to this. You are here at the whole week for the whole yes, week. Yes, yes. Just uh, visit Just us. Okay. It would be a pleasure to talk to you. Okay. Thank you very much for being here, Mr. Frommer. Oh, nice you. to see you. And thanks a lot for this very interesting presentation. Okay. It's your big head. Thank you. Thank you. So, we will continue after a short break with a uh, presentation from ITM Power with the topic, a, U a review of hydrogen internal combustion vehicles. Thanks a lot. <laughs>